All right, DJ, so we're talking stockings, but we're also talking the different types of fish you can use in stock and their benefits. You know, I hear a lot of landowners get confused and try and figure out, should they stock grass carp? When should they stock them? And when they shouldn't use grass carps? Could you kind of answer that question and explain it to us? Yes, I mean, the, the perfect answer to that question is it, it depends, yeah. right? Um, so grass carp are, are, are a great tool to use, uh, but they are by no means a silver bullet. Um, I get a lot of calls of, hey, I've got a ton of algae, how many grass carp do I need to stock? Well, if algae is your main concern, the answer is, is zero. You, know, you don't need grass carp. Grass carp do not eat algae. They are picky eaters. And if you've ever grabbed onto algae, it's got a real hair-like substance. And if I was a grass carp, I wouldn't want to eat that either. You know? So in areas where I do recommend grass carp, are when you've got excess rooted, rooted vegetation, whether it's coontail, American pondweed, um, mm -hmm. naiads, you know, along those lines, there's a lot of different species that they do cover, but they're the ones that are all rooted and they're usually soft to the touch. Um, grass carp do a wonderful job on that. Um, and that may be, you don't want to use uh, uh, chemical herbicide. You know, maybe you don't want to use herbicide because you pump out of your pond for irrigation, mm -hmm. or you do this, or you do that, or you're just not comfortable using herbicide, and that's totally fine. That is where grass carp can come into play. Now, you know, so if you do have an algae problem, what would you recommend, what would be the target to take care of that or to help with it? Yeah, so if you've got an algae issue, it probably means you don't have enough rooted vegetation. So removing carp that you have will actually help, uh, help reduce algae because when grass carp are, have eaten all of their food, which they're really good at, I mean, they're awesome. You know, they get in there, they do their job, but once they eat themselves out of house and home, all they're doing is swimming around looking for new vegetation um, and they're not, there's nothing else taking it up. So then you end up with a lot of nutrients in the water and that's where algae comes from is excess nutrients. Oh. So sometimes the recommendation may be remove your grass carp. Um, and that will help with your algae issues. Awesome, that's really good. So it's kind of like you hear it almost backwards a lot of times yeah. when people talk. So kind of transitioning away from grass carp, we were talking about when you start a pond and you get going, what do you recommend the types of stocking and what fish first and so forth? So what I like to do is the first fish I put in and I always recommend to any landowner that calls me is fathead minnows. I stock fathead minnows at 10 pounds of the acre as soon as there's four, five, six feet of pond, water in the pond. Um, they will reproduce every single day when water temperatures, or every single month when water temperatures are over 70 degrees. So if you stock them in May, you should get a spawn in June, July, August, and September. So then when September rolls around and you stock in your bluegills, that's a very common one to start because you want your bluegills to be the base of the food chain once your minnows are gone. Um, bluegills are a fall and then the next summer you can go in and you can stock your largemouth bass with the idea of your largemouth going into the pond and like walking into a full-blown buffet. Everywhere they turn there's food and they can eat, eat, eat and grow incredibly fast. Here in North Missouri um, we've had several ponds that are growing four pound bass within four, four years of completion. Oh wow, wow. That's so great. if you do it right and kind of follow, follow certain steps and right amounts you can get incredible growth. Uh, right off the bat and that main thing is is make sure there's plenty of food so I mean I love you recommend great recommendations and how it all started but if if someone's starting from scratch with a pond and wanting to know information how they do it where they should look who should they contact uh, I would reach out to your local biologist so I'm the biologist in the Northeast region I've got seven counties that I answer these questions for all the time um, but there's you know there's one of me across across the state everywhere so call into a local uh, regional office is typically the best or go on our website um, and search whatever county you're in. And there should be a biologist link to private waters. Um, and that's what I cover for seven of them. So if you Google, you know, Adair County mm -hmm. fisheries biologist, my name's gonna pop up and there'll be a there'll be a link to my phone number at the office. All right, I really appreciate it, DJ. Again, I'm gonna echo what he said. You can get more information about ponds and starting a pond and stocking and what fish you should stock, when you should stock it, why you should stock it, 
all that great information online at mdc.mo.gov and in the search bar just you can type in pond stocking or pond or you can click on the contact engage button go up there enter the county you're looking for and scroll down and you will be able to find the person uh, fisheries biologist and you can give them a call thanks for tuning in this afternoon you have a great rest of the day